The Sugar Hill Gang is often credited with creating the first major hip-hop album, as well as the first chart-topping rap single with Rapper's Delight in 1979. But there's a lot more to their story than that. Here's the truth behind these music pioneers. Sylvia Robinson was a minor music star in the mid-20th century. As one half of the duo Mickey and Sylvia, she topped the Billboard R&B chart in 1957 with the single Love is Strange. Then she had a solo hit in 1973 with Pillow Talk. In the late 60s, she and her husband, music industry veteran Joe Robinson, started a soul and R&B label called All Platinum Records. The company had some successful soul singles in the early 70s, but by the end of the decade, their influence had faded and they were on the verge of bankruptcy. Robinson saw a potential financial save at a Harlem club one night in 1979 in the form of rap. The recently emerging New York-centric party music made by talk singing over R&B and disco records. She goes, you know what? This is going to happen. I'm gonna make a hip hop album, no matter what. As Robinson's son Joey recounted to NPR in 2000, she saw where a DJ was talking and the crowd was responding to what he was saying. And this was the first time that she ever saw this before. And she said, Joey, wouldn't this be a great idea to make a rap record? First, Robinson would need a bass groove for rappers to rap over. So she paid 17-year-old New Jersey session musician Chip Sharon $70 to do it. Meanwhile, the label recruited some rappers, and they all made Rapper's Delight together. The song was attributed to the Sugar Hill Gang, and it became the first release on the All Platinum's imprint Sugar Hill Records. After Sylvia Robinson got the idea to release a rap record, she realized that she needed a rapper to perform it. So she lined up a candidate and arranged to meet him at a McDonald's in Inglewood, New Jersey. She decided not to do the song though, but Robinson had another candidate on her short list. It was a guy from the Bronx who worked at a place called Crispy Crust Pizza, which happened to be just across the street from the McDonald's. That performer was Henry Lee Jackson, also known as Big Bank Hank. Hey, this is Big Bank Hank the rap and pizza guy. She goes, hey, I hear you can rap. Oh yeah, I can rap. While all this was going down, budding rapper Guy O'Brien, who performed under the name Master G, happened to be walking past Crispy Crust. He was with his friends Mark Green, who knew Robinson and her son. That night, Jackson and O'Brien ventured to Robinson's house and took turns auditioning. Robinson couldn't decide which guy she liked better, so she opted to hire both. A third rapper named Michael Wright, aka Wonder Mike, was also present for the tryout. A few months earlier, he joined his cousin's DJ group Sound on Sound as a rapper. One of those DJs was Ron the Mad Master Mixer, who brought him along to Robinson's home and who also suggested that the record they were planning should include a hook based on the Sheik song Good Times. During Wright's audition, he presented what would become the introduction to Rapper's Delight. He got the job and the Sugar Hill Gang became a trio. Plans were made to also include a fourth member named Casper, another member of Sound of Sound, but he backed out after his record executive father told him not to do it. Rapper's Delight marks a definitive moment in time. It was the first major rap recording and the first one heard by millions of mainstream music fans. Remarkably, it was recorded in a single take. The music was captured in one session and then the lyrics were laid down all at once as well. The song's primary melody is the groove from Sheik's Good Times, but it isn't sampled or even looped because the equipment needed for those now standard practices wasn't available. Instead, session musician Chip Sharon played it over and over again in a studio for 15 minutes straight. With a 15 minute long tape ready for a vocal overlay, Sylvia Robinson brought in the rappers. She hired them on a Friday, and by the following Monday, they were in the studio rapping to the beat. Each member took turns to deliver their sections of the song in one take. The release recording contains no overdubs, so it's essentially a live recording. It's impressive to capture any song in one take, let alone such a popular and influential one. But the magic is undercut somewhat by the fact that so much of what makes Rapper's Delight so great was totally stolen. Rappers at New York parties in the late 70s performed over pre-existing R&B records, so Sylvia Robinson recreated that formula for Rapper's Delight. But instead of sampling the bass line from Good Times, she had a studio musician imitate it. That constitutes blatant copyright infringement though, as nobody at Sugar Hill Records had bothered to clear anything with Sheik's Nile Rodgers and Bernard Edwards, the writers of Good Times. Rodgers first heard Rapper's Delight on the dance floor at a New York club called Leviticus. The DJ told Rogers that he bought the record in Harlem, 
Rogers and Edwards eventually sued Sugar Hill Records for copyright infringement. The parties reached a settlement out of court, resulting in future pressings and releases of Rapper's Delight crediting Rogers and Edwards as co-songwriters, entitling them to a share of the profits in perpetuity. The Sugar Hill Gang raps with confidence and precision for the entire duration of Rapper's Delight, which in its original form lasts nearly 15 minutes. That's no small feat, but the group had a little help. Before joining the Sugar Hill Gang, Big Bank Hank managed Curtis Brown, also known as Grandmaster Cass and Casanova Fly, an early rapper in the Bronx in the 70s with his group the Cold Crush Brothers. According to Brown, Jackson borrowed money from his parents to buy the Cold Crush Brothers a better sound system. To pay it back, he got a job at Krispy Crust Pizza, which is where Sylvia Robinson discovered him and hired him, as he was rapping some of Brown's lyrics, which formed the basis of Rapper's Delight. In 2014, Brown told the New York Post, it was his job as my manager to introduce me to Sylvia, but he was an opportunist and he just jumped on it for himself. Hank couldn't rap a package. He didn't change one word of the song. I was casting overfly, not him. What is Hank supposed to tell Sylvia Robinson? He's supposed to say, well, I'm not a rapper. Let me go introduce you to the dudes on the tape. There you go. The Sugar Hill Gang didn't invent rap. Sylvia Robinson simply determined that the time was right to capitalize on a sound that had already been growing in popularity. According to The Boombox, the first single that's a recognizable example of modern rap music is King Tim III's Personality Jock by the Fatback Band, a B-side of the early 1979 single You're My Candy Sweet. A few months after that track came out, Rapper's Delight made its debut on the Billboard Hot 100. In January 1980, the song would peak at number 36 on the pop chart, making it the first rap song to land on the top 40. Rapper's Delight also became the first rap song to be a smash hit on R&B radio, as it reached number four on the Billboard R&B chart. For a song from an emerging musical style to get crucial radio airplay is remarkable on its own, but for Rapper's Delight, to do it is even more surprising when you consider how long the song's original versions are. Mainstream commercial radio stations typically prefer songs that are no more than three or four minutes long. But Rapper's Delight, nevertheless, got airplay in both its six and a half minute short version and its full time 15 minute iteration. The Sugar Hill Gang expanded from releasing very long singles in 1979 to making an entire album in 1980. In February of that year, their self titled full length LP hit record stores around the United States. That was a big moment for the group and for rap in general. According to the source, it's the first rap album in history. It consisted of just six tracks, including yet another version of Rapper's Delight that clocks in at just under five minutes. Along with the group's second single, The Little Noticed, Rapper's Reprise, Jam Jam. And that's just about all the actual rap that appears on this so-called first rap album. According to the Boombox, Sylvia Robinson didn't think that a 39-minute LP of rap music would be commercially viable, so she instead had the album filled out with selections of tried-and-true musical forms like soul and disco. The Sugar Hill Gang made monumental history with Rapper's Delight, but they never had much tangible success on the charts after that. They're technically a one-hit wonder, and barely at that. Rapper's Delight just scraped into the Billboard Top 40 in 1979, peaking at number 36. Two follow-up singles couldn't land much radio play. Eighth Wonder and Apache managed to beat Top 20 R&B hits in the early 80s, but they barely made a din on the pop chart. A succession of singles followed, but none registered much with the public. Not even a potential comeback attempt in 1989 in the form of a Rapper's Delight remix. None of the group's four albums that were released between 1980 and 1984 went platinum or even gold, which led to the band going on a long recording hiatus. Their last release to date was 1999's Jump On It, a rap album for children. It features Kids Rapper's Delight, Kids Rap Along, a toned down version of Rapper's Delight with kids' voices added to the mix, as well as a family friendlier cover version of Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five's The Message, called It's Like a Dream Sometimes. Rapper's Delight made millions for the Sugar Hill Gang and Sugar Hill Records, as it sold around 2 million copies. The band also scored another huge payday more than 20 years after the song's original recording because of a lawsuit. In 1998, the group filed suit against Turner Broadcasting after the company commissioned a performance of Rapper's Delight. The rappers were told that the clip would appear only on closed-circuit TVs at the Studio 54 nightclub in New York City as part of a pre-Goodwill Games promotional event. But instead, the footage ended up in a TV commercial for Snapple, a Goodwill game sponsor. In their defense, the beverage company and broadcaster both contended that the Sugar Hill Gang were told beforehand about the ad in question. 
In 2002, the United States District Court for the Southern District of New York ruled in favor of the Sugar Hill Gang. The musicians were awarded $165,000 in compensatory damages and a whopping $2.8 million in punitive damages. Sylvia Robinson died in 2011, which meant that control of Sugar Hill Records was passed down to her son, Joey Robinson Jr. He toured under the name of the Sugar Hill Gang, which he had the legal right to. This led to some confusion for fans of old school rap. Robinson's version of the Sugar Hill Gang toured for years, but the performers who actually recorded Rapper's Delight weren't a part of it, and they had to do their own thing under a different name. The surviving members of the original trio performed for a while in the United States as Rapper's Delight featuring Wonder Mike and Master G. But trademark laws are different in Europe, so in that continent, the rappers were able to exploit some loopholes and perform under their individual stage names while boasting that they were formerly of, and the original members of, the Sugar Hill Gang. By 2016, shortly after Joey Robinson Jr. died and his version of the rap collective fell apart, the original members had successfully worked out legal arrangements to perform as the Sugar Hill Gang once again. Y'all remember the Sugar Hill Gang? Y'all remember the Sugar Hill Gang? The group remains active, albeit with some necessary lineup changes, as Big Bang Hank passed away in 2014 after a battle with cancer, and Henry Williams, aka Hendall, ostensibly now occupies his place in the band. In 2019, the trio toured to commemorate the 40th anniversary of Rapper's Delight, alongside fellow early rap pioneers The Furious Five. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus even more grunge videos about your favorite stuff are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.